Hey, you guys. I guess I can say I'm back. Um, I'm not really sure how to start this video. Um, it's really hard for me to talk about this. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of you guys do know the reason why I haven't been on YouTube. And this really, this is really, really hard. Um, on August 4th, um, my husband and I got a message from my son, Wuzzle's friend, that he was being rushed to the hospital because he wasn't breathing. Um, now, mind you, this is on a Sunday, and um, he had left Saturday night to go hang out with his friends. And when, when we when we got to the hospital, when we was driving to the hospital, you know, I just basically felt like, okay, he had another seizure. I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna see him and I'm gonna bring him home. This hospital was further than the one around the corner from me because like I said, he stayed the night at his friend's house. And um, it was like a 22, 25 minute drive. When we got to the hospital, there was like security. This is like a different type of hospital. You had to basically show your ID at the window for who you was coming to see. And one of the male nurses, the man, the male nurses that I will bring you to the room. So, you know, I still had this feeling like, you know, I'm just going to go see him and I'm going to bring him home. They didn't bring me to my son's room. They brought me to like this little room and said, the doctor will be in to see you. Um, those couple of minutes felt like forever. And when the doctor came in, it just seemed like he just kept rambling on and on and on about how he wasn't breathing. They tried to resuscitate him. And I just was like, can I see my son now? And that's when they told me that um, he passed away. I had to go see him laying there in the hospital. And honestly, just really didn't want to believe that it was true. And I still feel like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? He left and now he's gone. And, um, I feel like I want to wake up from this dream, this really bad dream that I've been in. Like, I honestly am really like in denial somewhat. Um, This is the hardest thing that I've ever been through in my life. This is the worst pain that I've ever felt in my life. Like, I would never wish this type of pain on anybody. Um, you know, I have five children. And... Losing a child is like the worst thing anyone could ever experience. I'd trade places with him for anything in this world. Um, uh, I have been trying every day to just make it through the day, day by day. I try to keep myself busy. 
I've been coloring, playing these stupid games on my phone, trying to clean. Today, if this video goes up, today is August the 29th. Today makes two weeks since his celebration of his life ceremony. You know, I had it August 15th, the day before my daughter Mumsy's birthday. And it doesn't get any easier, for real. It really doesn't. Because it's like every little thing reminds me of him. And I just miss him so much. Like, I miss him. It was just so unexpected. And his friends and some of my family my immediate family and my internet family have been so supportive. Like seriously, um, I have heard nothing but good things about my son. How he was such an inspiration to all of his friends because he had his own clothing line and they even continued his clothing line brand. And it, it hurts even more so when you hear like all of these amazing things about someone that has passed away. You know, it's like, why, why do you hear that now? That's the hard part. And to hear his friends tell me he would always talk about me and how much he loves me. And I feel the same way about him, but sometimes that hurts because I miss him. And I hear people say to me, he's with you in spirit. And I understand that. But honestly, that is not good enough. That definitely is not good enough. Sometimes I feel like I'm losing my mind because one minute I could be like just leveled. And then the next minute I'm like, God knows where. Um, I sleep in his room, like if I'm waiting for something, waiting for him. And this is really hard. I don't want to make this video too long because I don't want to sit here and cry. But I do want to tell you guys that I thank you all for reaching out to me every day, messaging me, emailing me. And I know I have not responded to like a whole bunch of you guys. And it's not that I'm ignoring you guys. It's just that I'm really going through something. Um, I can never imagine losing a child. He is 21 years old. And he and I, he and I were like thick as thieves. We would clash sometimes, but you know, that's what every parent. He was like the butter to my toes, like for real. And it's hard when you know that you're not gonna see that person no more. You know what I'm saying? That shit is real hard. And you just feel like you want to wake up. Just like, I want to wake up. I want to wake up. Just want to wake up. And everything will be back to normal. That's why I say to you guys, life is short. You have to live it to the best of your ability. And like for things like this, it allows you to be more humble. But at the same time, I start feeling like I'm so 
angry with life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm so angry. <sighs> you, you know, I count the days. count the time, like, what he would be doing at this time. You know, people say you have the memories. That's great. Having memories is great. But I want new memories, too. I had him cremated. He had a beautiful ceremony. It was so crowded. His friends from New York drove two days to be here, you know. It was a beautiful ceremony. And um, I had him cremated because, for one, you guys know, I'm not from Arizona. And it's not set in stone that I'm going to stay here forever. And I would never want to leave my baby here. And also, he didn't want to be buried in the ground. He and I had this talk many times because... I don't want to be in the ground either. So I had him cremated because I wanted him to be home with me. But that that's hard. That I didn't know that that part was going to be so hard because it's like the devil plays tricks on your mind sometimes. You think about just like the craziest things <laughs> of having someone cremated and it that it's hard for me because it's like I just seen you you just walked out that door and now you're here in an urn doesn't sit well with me doesn't sit well with me I feel like it was my fault because I moved here and if I didn't move here, he wouldn't have known those friends to sleep over and, you know, pass away in his sleep. It's just a lot of stuff that, you know, makes me hurt. It hurts. It hurts a lot. And like I said, um, I just take it day by day. Day by day, I take it. Some days are okay. Some days are just not at all okay. I talked to him all day. And my son, he had like this, this beautiful lit attitude. He just loved life. And though sometimes, like I said, we would clash, he was never an evil person to anyone. And... You know, I could say that, and people say that because that's their kid, but nah, it, it, it is not even from me. It's from, like, the hundreds of people that have reached out to me and told me about my son. And I know, like everyone says, he wouldn't want you to be like this. He wouldn't want you to be crying like this. And I understand that. You know, sometimes I feel like that's just what someone says to make you feel better or to make themselves feel better or maybe because they just don't, they just don't know what to say. And I know Wuzzle would never want me to feel like this, you know, but it's hard. This is the hardest thing that I have ever encountered. This is, this is, this pain, this pain that I feel I wouldn't wish this on anyone, not even my worst enemy if I had one. I would never wish this on anyone. And it's like, you gotta go through the rest of your life without that person. And that's hard, you know what I'm saying? It's hard. This is like seriously life changing. this experience that I've had 
because this is an experience that I will have to live with for the rest of my life. I have come across some really good hearted people, some real people, and some people that say they care, but just really don't care. They just want their shit done. You know, I have spoken to many other companies that I, you know, record videos for, and they were so understanding, and I appreciate that. And then there were a couple that, after a week, well, do you feel better now? Where's my video? Like, are you serious? <laughs> I just try to laugh it off. But then there's that other part of me that's like, you know what? Not today. Not today. Um, I know I'm probably not going to seem like the best jipper, happy person for a while. And... I understand that. But I understand that. I cannot. Allow this to tear me down to the point where I cannot return. And sometimes it feels like it has, you know, sometimes it feels like it has. I probably won't be the same person after this. I ended up putting my lashes on today just so that I could do a video for you guys, this video, because I just don't care. Like, it's not that I don't care, but it's like, I just don't care, but you understand what I'm saying? Like, I care, but not to that extreme. Not to that extreme. Um, I've lost a lot of weight from this. I don't really eat. It's hard for me to sleep. I think about him all day long. Like I said, I've been trying to do things to keep my mind busy. Like the adult coloring books and phone games and games on my phone. And it helps. I really don't watch too much TV now because I'm kind of like scared of what I'm going to hear, negative stuff. So the things that I have been watching are things like about planet Earth or sea life, just something that's just calming. Um, I don't go outside. I've had panic attacks. And I don't go outside because I feel guilty. Like, he can't see what I see anymore. And a lot of the places that I see, we've been to, so it it hurts. You know, it, it just like really bothers me a lot. So I, I don't go outside. Um, I do go, but not too far and sometimes I have like a panic attack and I have to like go back home but I don't want this to make me feel like I'm a caged person a caged animal or secluded from the world you know what I'm saying um, people always say things happen for a reason I really can't find the positive in that. Not in this. Not in this. I'd give anything to have my son back. I'd give anything to trade places with him. But I know that that's not possible. So I just try to take it day by day. I just want to thank you all for just being so supportive in my corner and checking on me things like that I really truly appreciate it because just being able to see the love and the concern has helped me um, I go to counseling you know because of this this is 
I don't know how I'm going to not get over this, but I just don't know how I'm going to continue. How do you continue to live your life when you miss a child? Like your child is gone. Like I know I have to live because I do have other children, but you you understand what I'm saying? Like there's that other part of me that is no longer here. And in the back of your mind, or not even in the back of your mind, in general, you just be like you just feel like if he was here, he would be this age and he would be doing this or you know, it's it's the not knowing, the unknown. And a lot of times I cry a lot because I just want to know, is he at peace? Can he please tell me something? That bothers me a lot too. This all bothers me, all of this. It hurts. It's. It's a pain, I can't even describe the pain, but it's a pain that I have to live with. I've tried so many things to keep me busy. I sat and tried to make a wig. Um, I sat and tried to bleach the knots of a wig. (laughs) But it's like, regardless of what I think about or try to do, it's always gonna be on my mind. But like I was saying, you guys, I, I thank you guys all for just being there for me. Um, this is so hard. I don't even really know what to say. I know that it's baby steps. You have to take this day by day. You cannot rush any type of healing process or grieving process. I just know that my heart is broken and I feel empty and I feel numb. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like I was robbed of everything, of everything. You know, that was my middle child. He still is. But I just feel like I was robbed. Um, Yeah. I don't really have any expectations for, like, getting over this today or tomorrow. I just know that this is going to take me some time. And I do know that I have to live my life for my other children and and stuff. Um, my older son, my eldest son, he had bracelets made that say Wuzzle World on them and the birthday and stuff. And we have shirts because his name, his clothing brand was called Organized chaos is called organized chaos. So, his friends that were so inspired by him because he inspired them to make clothes, they made a shirt. And I'll if I remember, I'll post a picture at the end. And it says organizer of chaos with my son's pictures on it. And it's really hard. Like, these kids. These young men come over to this day still. They text me, they call me, they come over. We checking on you, we checking on the family, you know. Good kids, just amazing kids. Um, A week after he had passed, they had did a car wash on their own, you know. And I felt all the love right there. And so I know that my son has brought some amazing young people into my life or into our lives, and I'm grateful for that. So I know that he's looking over me because there are some days, the other day, I had got five text messages within minutes of each other from five of his different friends, you know? They were just within minutes of each other. There were five of them, 
some from New York, some from Arizona. Hey, mama, just checking on you, you know, like, so I know that that's him sending his friends to make sure I'm okay. And that sometimes hurts too, you know what I'm saying? But I know that like, I'll be okay or, you know, I'll, I'll get through this. I will get through this. Um, when I have no clue. But I just wanted to tell you guys that I thank you all and I love you all and I just want to let you guys know that I'm okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm all right. I'm okay. I'm like right here. I'm not okay, but I'm I'm okay. I'm just trying to get through this every day. And I just wanted to tell you guys that I'm okay. Because I get so many messages saying, I'm worried about you. We haven't heard back from you. Are you all right? Like, you know, you. I understand. And I get that. And, I, you know, I will post videos up probably within the week. I have so many videos that were um, already done. I didn't even edit them. You know me. I do, like six, seven videos in one day, just so that I could have days to do other things with my kids. So you will see other videos, um, pre-recorded videos. There'll be voiceovers because I just have done a lot of like silent videos that make them faster. But I just want to tell you guys, if I seem kind of monotoned, in any of my voiceovers please be understanding you know I still have to make a living I, I honestly just want to crawl in the bed and just stay there but I still have to make a living and I'm trying to live my life through my son because he was happy so I'm trying I'm not saying I'm gonna be happy today or tomorrow, but I'm trying. And like I said, this is the hardest thing that I've ever had to deal with, losing a child. No one ever thinks that they are gonna lose one of their children, regardless of the age. This is hard. And I would never wish this on anyone. This pain that I feel, I would never wish this on my worst enemy. But my family is very supportive. Not all my family, like my, you know, blood family, not all of them. Some just said a plant, sent a plant. Like my biological father sent me a plant. Hope you're feeling better now. I took that damn plant and tossed it, okay? And tossed him too. You couldn't take a plane here because you was, you have your property taxes to pay for us, $200 every six months but you could fly your ass to the Philippines with your wife. Word. And then my son's friends, they drove from New York to Arizona, but you couldn't take a plane here by yourself. So I blocked him from calling me, and I told him what I thought about him. My own father, I sure did. I told him exactly what I thought about him and told him and his wife they could take the plant and shove it up their old tired asses. Some may say that wasn't nice to do, but let me tell you something. It made me feel a whole lot better because how dare you send me a plant? I told him the day it happened. He didn't call me for like a week after. My own brother didn't even bother call me. He left a comment on my social media. What type of shit is that? And this is the part where it makes me angry inside because who the hell? What type of family is that? You know what I'm saying? So... Like I told my mama and my, my, my other son, I don't fuck with the Furmans no more. That's my last name, but I'm not fucking with them. And like I told my father that too, you know, he tried to call me the other day. Fuck you calling me for now. There's nothing to say. I already told you how I felt. You sent me a plant in the day after my son's service. He calls me and I don't answer. And then he texts me to ask me, did you get the plant? We just want to make sure you got the plant. Sometimes people can be so insensitive 
and so selfish. And you know, it's just sad, it's sad. And it makes it even more pathetic and sad because my own internet family has showed more concern than my own biological father so and brother. So that goes to say that blood relatives ain't always your family. I, you know, they, they ain't always your family. And at a time like this when I needed like family the most, you couldn't even be there. But I will say this, my son had so many friends and, you know, his ceremony was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, I made a DVD of a 30 minute DVD that could play on the screens there. Some of it was videos, some of it was pictures of him while the ceremony played. And it was a celebration of his life and it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. And I just pray that he is at peace and he's happy. And I just ask God to give me strength every day, me and my family. Because this is a lifelong journey that I'm going to have to live with. And it's going to be a hard one. Because there'll be milestones in my life that I want to share with him. Nephews that have grown up. My grandson Tinky asked me the other day, where's Uncle Wuzzle? Is he going to come home now? Is he going to wake up from his nap? I'm going to go in, you guys. I'm going to go now because I got to get myself together. I got to pull it together. But I love you guys, and I'll see you guys soon on YouTube with some new videos. Um, just give me time. I love you guys. Oh, with me and Wuzzle, he's crazy. You know, he does this. This is him. He does the fashion. He does this, you know. Yes, he does this. He's my mama. <laughs> so crazy. 